over three million years ago, during the Miocene epoch, a fearsome and unique saber-toothed metatherian roamed the expansive plains and lush forests of South America. This extraordinary creature had a unique hunting strategy, equipped with powerful limbs, razor-sharp claws, and an unparalleled set of ever-growing saber-like canine teeth. This was Thylacos smilus atrox. Thylacos smilus's taxonomic classification places it within the order Sparacidonta, a group of metatherian mammals that lived in South America during the Cenozoic era. As a metatherian, Thylacos smilus was more closely related to marsupials, such as kangaroos, than to placental mammals like true saber-toothed cats. Within the order Sparacidonta, Thylacos smilus belongs to the family Thylacos milidae, which comprises a single genus, Thylacos smilus, and two known species, T. atrox and T. lentis. As for its size and physical form, Thylacos smilus was a medium-sized predator, with an estimated body length of around 1.5 meters 5 feet and a weight ranging from 80 to 120 kilograms 176 to 264 pounds somewhat similar in size to a modern jaguar, another South American predator. Its stout, muscular body was supported by robust limbs that were likely well suited for ambushing prey. The most distinctive feature of Thylacos smilus was its elongated upper canine teeth, which were housed in deep sockets and grew continuously throughout its life. Its skull also featured bony flanges that protected these massive teeth, along with strong neck muscles. The combination of these features made Thylacos smilus a formidable predator, capable of delivering a devastating bite to subdue its prey. Recent comparative biomechanical studies have approximated the bite force of T. Atrox, originating from its maximum gape, to be 38 newtons, which is considerably weaker than a leopard's bite. This implies that the jaw muscles of T. Atrox played a minimal role in subduing prey. The skull structure of T. Atrox closely resembled that of Smilodon, as it was better equipped to endure loads exerted by the neck muscles. Coupled with evidence of robust and agile forelimb muscles as well as additional skeletal adaptations for stability, this information supports the theory that T. Atrox's hunting technique involved immobilizing its prey before executing accurately targeted, deep bites into the soft tissue, powered by formidable neck muscles. However, a more recent study has somewhat changed the view of its hunting strategy. The stress patterns on the skull indicate that it was not as well adapted to the puncturing technique as Smilodon was. However, Thylacos Smilus's canines were better adapted for a scraping motion with the rear edge of the teeth being used to shear off pieces of flesh. The motion would be somewhat like that of a knife being used to cut open a bag. So while they were used much like other saber-toothed predators, there were small differences in the technique. In a 2002 analysis conducted by Christine Argo on the evolution of predatory Boreanids, it is proposed that Thylacos smilus was a specialized species with limited stereoscopic vision due to its small eyes which had an overlap of merely 50 to 60 degrees lower than modern predators. However, the well-developed auditory bulla and muscular physique suggests that Thylacos smilus may have been an ambushed predator in open and relatively arid environments, where sound absorption is lower compared to more humid areas, allowing its acute hearing to counterbalance its limited vision. Argo also posited that Thylacos smilus could have been a nocturnal hunter, similar to modern lions of course able to hunt during the day but preferring night. Miocene South America was very hot, and it's possible that nocturnal hunting was partially an adaptation for heat regulation, hunting in the cooler nights to be able to be more active without the risk of overheating. Furthermore, a 2023 study by Gallard et al. indicates that despite the unique positioning and divergence of its eyes, Thylacos smilus still maintained some stereoscopic visual capability due to the frontation and verticality of its eye orbits. This adaptation is believed to be a trade-off resulting from the distinct morphology of its teeth, which continually grew throughout its life. The study also suggests that Thylacos smilus's predatory ability was not significantly hindered by the reduction in binocular vision caused by its enlarged canines. From what we know, a typical successful hunt for Thylacos smilus would involve it ambushing and grappling its prey. From here it would insert its canines into vital areas, likely the neck, but the abdomen would also be a viable target. 
It would then pull its canines back with the muscles in its neck, ripping apart its prey's skin and tissue. From here it would either hold its prey until it bleeds out, or let it go and trail it until it expires. Unfortunately for Thylacosmilus it eventually went extinct. Although it used to be thought that Thylacosmilus went extinct due to competition from saber-toothed cats migrating into South America, it has now been shown it went extinct millions of years before saber-toothed cats appeared there. Thylacosmilus's relatives had been dying out for a while, these extinctions being caused by climatic changes and competition with contemporary Archosaurian fauna. Thylacosmilus died out with many of its close relatives, with only its fossils left to tell us of its existence. Thylacosmilus was a fascinating and very unique metatherian predator. Between its interesting look, very rare killing technique, and its odd taxonomy this predator is like no other. If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts make sure to comment. Have a great day everyone.